cryptic, enigmatic, alien, mixomycetes, or slime molds often defy our expectations of what a single-celled organism should be capable of. Reaching upwards of a meter or more in area, these massive amoeboids prowl the forest floor, ravenously consuming microbes, fungi, and inorganic materials. Despite being only a single cell, slime mold plasmodia can contain thousands to millions of nuclei. They've been shown to exhibit memory, problem solving, and have an acute sense of their environment. I hope to go into more detail about the biology of slime molds in a future video. Today, however, we will be learning about mixoculture, the art of growing happy slime molds. Brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. If you would rather not try and source your own wild slime mold plasmodium, I sell culture kits with everything you need to get started. A link to that will be provided below. The kit contains a live plasmodium of Fissurum polycephalum, a dehydrated sclerotium of the same species, a petri dish with filter papers, a roll of parafilm, a tube of sterilized oats, and a syringe of sterile water, as well as an illustrated manual that describes all we will be discussing in this video, and much more. Other non-included materials I recommend getting are some metal tweezers, a little torch, and some isopropyl alcohol. As I mentioned, slime molds consume microbes, so they don't mind living alongside bacteria and mold. Therefore, aseptic or sterile technique is not necessary for their survival. However, as we will be periodically opening their containers, reducing the amount of contamination within is a good idea for your own health and hygiene. This is why it can be helpful to have a handful of cultures going, so if one becomes contaminated, you don't lose the entire culture. Before you begin working with your cultures, decontaminate your work surface and hands with alcohol. Feeding slime molds is simple. After also sterilizing a small dish and flame sterilizing your tweezers, dump some of your sterilized oats into the dish and transfer them onto the plate. Hydrate your oats with a syringe or dropper. This makes them easier for the mixos to consume and prevents the slime mold from drying out. You can seal up your dish with parafilm or cling wrap. Two squares of parafilm cut in half is plenty to wrap around a single dish. Hold one end of the parafilm down with one hand and stretch it as you wrap it around the edge of the plate. This will help keep your dish closed, keep out contamination, and allow air exchange. To grow your collection, you can transfer your slime mold from one container to another. As before, we begin by sterilizing our tools and hands. Then, we place a filter paper disc into our dish and hydrate it with our syringe. After we've allowed our tweezers to cool, we can pick a colonized oat flake from our culture and transfer it into our new container. After wiping and sterilizing our tweezers again, we can transfer some fresh food onto the plate as well. and hydrate it with our syringe. Wrap the plate as mentioned before. One benefit of using filter paper is that you can dry out the culture on the paper disc and save it. This dehydrated dormant form is called a sclerotium and can be revived by simply rehydrating the paper. You can create a slime mold habitat out of almost any container, such as a Tupperware or a mason jar. You may notice that most petri dishes have these little tabs on the lids that keep it from forming an airtight seal against the bottom dish. This is to allow for airflow, which your slime mold needs. As mentioned, the parafilm on our petri dish 
allows for air exchange while preventing contamination, such as mold spores, from drifting into the dish. Since we can't wrap our DIY containers this way, as their lids are airtight, we will make a small hole somewhere on the lid and cover it with some sort of filter. You can buy these syringe filters if you want to be a little fancy boy, or you can use Tyvek, which many mailing envelopes are made from. Though you absolutely do not need to for the sake of growing slime molds, I plan to eventually sterilize these containers in a pressure cooker, so I'm using this heat-resistant RTV silicone to glue down the filter in place. After cutting a circle of Tyvek, I will do the same thing for this container. For this Tupperware, I'm simply stuffing polyfill into the filter hole. You can find polyfill at your local craft store. I'm cutting the excess just to keep it out of the way. Now that we have our slime homes made, we can add a filter paper as we've previously done. But I have special plans for these containers, so I'll be using a different type of growth media. Agar is a handy substrate for growing slime molds. The surface is solid but contains accessible water for the slime mold, so you don't have to worry about keeping it hydrated like you do with filter paper. Additionally, you can set mazes or other experimental obstacles into the gel. Agar powder can be found online or at many Asian markets for fairly cheap. For our purposes, we are making a 1-2% non-nutrient agar solution, adding about 2 grams of agar powder to 100 milliliters of water. Most agar recipes in microbiology also require the addition of a nutrient, like sugar or malt extract, which serves as a microbial food source. But since we'll be providing the slime food in the form of oats, we can leave the agar plain. This has the added benefit of making our agar less appetizing to contaminants like mold or bacteria, as agar itself is effectively devoid of nutrients. You can therefore skip pressure sterilization as well. To activate the gelling effect, you need to bring the agar to a boil. After that, we can pour it into our containers. Follow the same steps we outlined for inoculating filter paper to inoculate your agar containers. As I alluded to earlier, we can set obstacles into our agar gel. I have a bunch of these Legos that work great for this. After building this simple maze, I poured the remainder of the agar into the container. Since I want the slime to have plenty of energy to explore the maze after inoculation, I'm taking a fairly large amount of plasmodium from this plate, using this micro spatula to scrape and transfer this schleam. I'm inoculating it at the start of the maze and giving it some food. Then I'll place some oats in the middle of the maze for a mid-journey snack, and finally, and placing some more oats at the end of the maze. Now we wait and see what it does. Well, it turns out that this slime mold beat the maze, but in a slightly unconventional and unforeseen way. It found a tiny little crevice in the Legos and crawled right through. Well, maybe I'll workshop this one a little bit. Another simple experiment you can perform is a food preference test. Slime molds have an astoundingly acute sense of chemotaxis, meaning they can sense minute directional gradients in certain chemicals and locate their source. Generally, this means creeping towards food and away from toxic sources. We can test this by mixing various kitchen spices with our hydrated oats and placing them around the dish. Once we inoculate the slime mold in the center, we can wait and see which pile it chooses. Beyond being fun to work with and challenging my notion of intelligence, Mixomycetes as a group also form some of the most beautiful, intricate, and often cryptic structures you can hope to find in nature. Deepening my awareness of them has helped me to slow down as I walk through the woods and take note of the little details around me. After all, it's not about the destination, but the friends we make along the way, even the slimy ones. Well. 
And that's about it for this one. Thank you for joining me. The algorithm inclines me to ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. You can follow the Fresno Mycology Society on Facebook and Instagram, or connect with us through our website at fresnomycology.org. Video production, believe it or not, is a time-consuming and expensive hobby. If you want to help me make more content like this, you can become a patron on Patreon. This last month, you lovely contributors have helped me purchase this awesome RGB light, which I featured heavily in this video and will likely use in many videos to come. So, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for being here and being curious. I'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting.